what are you waiting for? Come join the Geek Drums Nation. What is up, guys? Welcome to today's video. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. I'm wishing you all well. Uh, today, I just want to talk about Superman and Lois, that penultimate episode. That was amazing. That was amazing from start to finish. I am truly, truly, truly not ready to see the show go, but all good things must come to an end, and I'm glad they can do it on their own terms, and they were not just outright canceled, because truth be told, if CW had it their way, it would have been gone after season three, and we would not have gotten this amazing, amazing story, this amazing, amazing finish. Um, I can't wait for Monday. But before we jump into that, if you are new here, please like, share, and subscribe. I, I'm not going to do the whole spiel because I lost my monetization status, as you all know, but I am working on it. And you can help me with that if you can just blow these views up, blow these likes up. I really love covering Superman and Lois, and I plan to keep covering stuff on Superman and Lois and just Easter eggs that I found throughout the finale and all the other episodes. I may go back and just do a rewatch of the entire season with you guys on my channel. I haven't decided yet, but if that's something you all would like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. We start off this episode by learning that Lex Luthor has leaked the information that Milton got off of John Henry Iron's suit. The world is now questioning whether Superman is losing his powers or not. And that's crazy that leads John to say that maybe they should take a page out of Luther's book and maybe they should just, you know, get rid of him, just kill him. You know, Clark's not going for that. Superman does not kill. The super family does not kill. The fraternals do not kill. The super twins, the super sons, whatever you want to call them, they do not kill. And, right, I mean, you know, I kind of agree. I kind of agree with John at this point because, I mean, Lex is nuts. How many people has Lex killed? Like, like let's be serious. How many people has he just gotten rid of? And yes he went to prison but he was falsely accused of something to go to prison which we find out bruno had to do because bruno wanted to get rid of him anyway because he's a cancer he's nuts like lex is crazy and you know i, I just jumped ahead of myself guys bruno manheim was back in this episode it was good to see uh bruno back it was good to see chad coleman totally totally unexpected uh guest star appearance totally unexpected i did not to see bruno I did not expect to see Bruno back. I also did not expect him to see... I don't know, I'm getting tongue-tied because I'm so excited. I did not expect him to be so, you know, helpful towards Lois. But we do know Bruno's not a bad guy. He's a bad guy, but he's not a Lex Luthor-esque bad guy. He did what he had to do. You know, him and Pia did. They both did what they, what they had to do, what they thought they had to do. But he's atoning for his sins. He's, you know, he, he's helping Lois out in any way he can. And I love to see that. I love to see them just bouncing ideas off each other and just talking to each other. Um, he's how he's how she finds out that he was in love with Cheryl Kimbrell, Gretchen, whatever the lady's name was. That's how he found out. That's how she found out that uh, Lex, that they were an item. And basically, he's using Amanda in the same way that he used Gretchen. And that was just mind blowing to me because last week's episode made it seem like she was the one in charge and we saw that lex did not like that he was not in control of the situation i don't know why people thought that the scene of his panic attack was him getting super hearing that was not that you don't get powers from a heart there was no heart transplant i'm sorry i'm going on a tangent but those are just some of the weirdest theories that i have heard in the past couple of weeks um but yeah that, that whole scene in the prison um with bruno talking about some tell superman i'm glad he's back like that truly that made me smile chad coleman is an amazing actor and just the way he approaches the role of bruno Mannheim, so you know just so stoic and serious all the time with a calmness a weird eerie calmness like he just has everything together all the time i loved it um i loved him last season and i'm glad we got to see him at least one more time in this role but uh, we still have to deal with the fact that the boys, you know, the family is a celebrity. Like, they're celebrities now. Um, it's paparazzi and fans everywhere. The boys are walking to the diner to get something to eat, and they just have to deal with all of these fans just, just out just out and about. Um, and while they're doing that, Lois and Clark, they're at the Gazette. You know, they're trying to talk about things. They're trying to, you know, brainstorm ways. Lois is looking at basically what I call her crime board. Her crime board, like we like we saw a lot of people having all these PW shows. She's looking at her crime board, trying to, you know, piece together different, you know, different pieces. Like, try to figure out how can we get Lex? How can we get him off the streets? How can we get him convicted once and for all? How can we prove to the world that he is guilty of his crimes he may not be guilty of what he originally went to jail for but he is guilty of so much more 
Uh, we have a nice, nice, nice touching moment with Clark and Lois. I just want to say Tyler and Bitsy, mwah, hands off to them because like, oh my God, they are just so perfect as Clark and Lois. You can feel the love. Like if you didn't know that Bitsy was actually married and happily married at that, you could swear like that their chemistry is so good. You would think that they were married outside of the show. Their chemistry is that good. And that's just a testament to how amazing these actors are and how much they study these characters, how much they put themselves into it. Man, you can tell they're best friends in real life. They are best friends in real life. They don't have any beef. They may have disagreements, but you can't tell. Like, oh my God, it was all oh, that scene was so good when he's just talking to her. He's just talking to Lois about, you know, um, the uh, her, her master class. And uh, t tell me your favorite part, tell me your favorite part. It's my favorite part. He's just so dorky. I love that. I love that about them. That was one of my favorite, favorite parts of this episode. I cannot lie, one of my favorite parts of this episode. So, I want to cut back to the boys real quick. And, and you know how I do in these reviews, it's not a is not it's not in any linear form i'm just talking about some of my favorite aspects of this episode because this review is going up very very late in the week but um so w when they go back when the boys are at the diner and you see i'm just excited because i just love this show guys i love the show if you can't tell so they go back to the diner uh they're at the diner and we find out that they have meals named after each other lois has a soup named after her um <laughs> john has a french dip named after him and uh jordan is on the kids meal he, and that clearly bothers him it's funny how much it bothers him but he has uh curly fries and when we see what the curly fries actually look like it's actually fitting because of his curly you know his curly afro it, it fits and i i thought that was like i thought that was like the cutest thing i cannot lie like i would get my kids that meal heck i get that meal for myself I, that's great merchandising and hats off to todd helping and his crew for thinking of that that was amazing it's so much superman merch in the diner now and it's just it's just crazy uh because at the end of the episode it comes back full circle that's because oh guys i'm getting tongue-tied because this episode was just freaking amazing um it comes full circle and we'll talk about that at a later time but they finish eating lunch clark meets them outside and you know he knows they can hear him because they're surrounded by paparazzi and fans, you know, they're signing autographs, you know, being nice, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And uh, Jordan uh, Clark says, uh, hey, boys, uh, we need to talk. And they look up, they hear him. The paparazzi see, oh, it's Superman across the street. It's Clark Kent. So they start waving. And he says, uh, guys, uh, I, I need to talk to my guys. With so he tells them, like, it's time to start training. And um, I've heard my good friends, Darren and Taz and uh, Darth and, and a few other creators say that this is something that would be like a you know a character arc like a season arc like not a full season arc but at least like a first half or a back half um you know with them actually doing some formal training like we've seen jordan go through his training since season one but not training together with his brother which if it wasn't being cut short we would definitely see but i'm still glad that we got to see it in some form you get what I mean. I'm still glad that we got to see it. Uh, so he's like, um, we need to go to the fortress. We need to do some training. And they're like, just right now. And then Clark's like, just give the people what they want. And when I tell you, me and my wife went nuts because they finally took off as a family. Superman and Sons. They took off in flight in front of the, in front of all the paparazzi, in front of all the fans. And man, that, that was just a sight to see. I was so excited to see that, guys. Like, I cannot lie. That was so dope. That was so dope to see them take off together. So he shows them like you know we, we've seen we've seen jordan deal with this like hologram training technology um and he programmed one in for when john henry was a stranger and it's fitting now because lex now has this armor it's as fast as him it's as powerful as superman um you know like and it almost killed superman so it's the perfect training module so we get this whole training montage and clark is sitting there and i'm thinking i'm like you've never had to train nobody this is an earth where superman is the only hero so he's never had to train anybody when he did anything he did it alone like we hear him say this when they get to the fairgrounds this first training session does not go as planned and clark gets frustrated as any parent would because it's getting down to the wire they don't know when lex is gonna attack they don't know when if bizarro is gonna lose his mind again and come back and try to attack them they don't know what's coming and clark is super worried because he's not at full strength he's not at full strength and um, we see him, he sends the boys home after they get their butts kicked by that hologram. It was hilarious, but it was fun to see because they were giving it their all. They were, like, they were pulling out 
heat vision and uh, freeze breath and just trying to rush it and everything. It was cool to see. So we see him talking to his mom and his mom's like, the boys will never be what you once were because they're half human. Which in the comics, and we we know the holograms, uh, holo, hologram grandpa and grandma have been wrong before. They have been wrong before because they said that Lois will never get pregnant and that Jonathan would never get powers, let alone Jordan getting powers. You know, uh, they said that that would never happen. But we see that they were wrong because in the source material, we know half Kryptonians surpass full Kryptonians. It's just like in Dragon Ball Z. Half breeds are sometimes more powerful than full bred Saiyans. The same thing can be said for Kryptonians. John Kent in the comics is way more powerful than his father. And I'll stand by that because we've seen it numerous times in the comics. So uh, he goes back. He tells Lois that things didn't go the way they planned it. And Lois is like, stop trying to train them like they're going to be on their own. Use them together. And he gets the bright idea like, and we get the fairground scene. We get the fairground scene. And he's basically like, whenever I didn't think I did it alone and yada, yada, yada. And that was so great to hear because I'm like, that's true. I never thought about it that way. They have to work as a team because they have each other. They have always had each other. But now, especially since John has powers, work as a team and they'll make up for not being full bred Kryptonians. And that works. So we see another fun training montage. Clark is just tossing them. And especially the shot where he tells them, just come at me with all you got and try to land one punch. If they land one punch, they win. So Jordan goes high, John goes low. I I freaking, oh, I love that. I love that guy. I really did love that. I, it, it was so cool to see. So they're doing that. Clark's tossing them. And then all of a sudden, they hear the roar. Who's roar? Bizarro's. Because if we cut over to Milton Fine and Lex, uh, Lex kill Milton is digging through the files, and I completely spaced that Lex and Milton and Amanda didn't know that this John Henry Irons is from a different earth. So when they dug up the whole Captain Luther thing, they were like, Oh, that's such smug arrogance, yada yada yada. So they also dig through the files and find more DOD stuff of Lois telling, um, uh, General Hardcastle that, uh, after, you know, after her whole with Bizarro and him flying off she figured that he probably went back to the mines because that's where the portal to his world was so Lex goes to find Bizarro trying to convince Bizarro to work for me again but Bizarro's just sitting there roaring at him which irritated me because I'm like this guy's not your friend you know he's not your friend you want to go home attack him but then that's when Clark shows up Clark tells the boys go find your mother go warn her so they can warn the town Bizarro may be coming for them yada 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 well Doomsday, I should say. Doomsday will be coming for them. That's another thing. That's another thing. The file that the DOD has on Doomsday is called Project Doomsday. So they actually name dropped him this time. He's officially Doomsday in canon, which I love. I, I love that. So, uh, first of all, the Lexo suit now, it it's lined with kryptonite. That way he can get rid of Clark easily. And he said something about a screw that could be used to dig out Clark's heart again. Uh, if he wants to kill the Man of Steel, this is the way to do it. Milton is weird, but did we peep the bottle city of Kandor sitting on his desk? Milton Fine is a version of Brainiac. Is that on his desk? And as I posted earlier this week, I have a theory. Uh, oh, it's it's a theory. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, we do. We Bitsy did confirm that there will be a surprise cameo in the finale. Now, I don't take much stock in what actors say. We learned this from the flash like numerous times. But guest starting role, I think that's the bottle city of Kandor. Is that where we finally get the supergirl that's supposed to be on this earth? Like maybe she never escaped Krypton. Maybe she never actually maybe she was captured in that bottle. You know? I'll, I'll, I don't know, guys. I'm just I'm spitballing here. That would be great to see. That way we'll know that in this world, not only does Clark have his voice and the irons he has supergirl that he can train up as well that would be really cool to see as like a farewell to this series and a farewell to the cw dc tv universe as a whole that would be pretty cool to see but i'm, I'm just spitball you know, let me know in the comment section down below if that was something if, if that's something you would like to see in the finale that's something i would like to see i i think that'd be really really cool that would be really really cool um but you know um lex decides that he's gonna fly off and all of this he flies off Back to Smallville, he's going to the mines, he's gonna go get his monster. Uh, but all of this stems from the beginning of the episode when, when you know when Clark shows up to talk to Lex and he basically called Lex like like you're letting this woman run everything. Like, do you have any ideas of your own? Like you in this suit and tie, like this isn't you. Like, like he basically like, he's calling him out. Like, if 
if I said profanity on this, you know what I would call him. Like, like Clark was basically calling him a, you know, uh, the word I will not say. But uh, yeah, that's basically what he's calling him. Like, he's saying he's whipped. Like, he's letting Amanda run everything. And Lex is like, I'm in control. And you can tell this clearly bothers him. And he'll, he's like, they like th that altercation between them. First of all, I love their chemistry. Tyler and Michael's chemistry is off the chart. Like, like for real. Michael Cutlets is an amazing Lex. And I'm so glad that we got to see him for a full season after he made that amazing impression last season. So yeah, like like that first that first scene between them was amazing. And this all stems from that. He gives Amanda a share of the company and it's basically to distract her because when Lois finds out what she finds out from Bruno, she goes to tell her, which it, it works because Amanda goes to talk to Lois after she confronts Lex uh in his old hotel apartment and he just shows up back in first of all nice truck lex i cannot stunt that's a nice truck very nice truck so after he shows up in smallville he goes to back to his little hotel house thingy whatever you want to call it where the place where he was living in smallville he has to pick some stuff up a man comes there confronts him like is this what you is it did you just give me this to distract me what are you doing here why didn't you tell me that you found that lex you'll never be able to control it that thing that people keep missing lex doesn't want to control it lex knows that lois turned the monster against him he just needs to kill him one more time because i think in this fully blown doomsday state of uh, the bizarro the kal-el mind is completely gone i think his mind is completely gone and he's just a mindless monster and he's attacking the first town that he saw lex wants to destroy everything that lois holds dear and she knows that she holds the town like near and dear to her heart her husband her family her you know her kids her friends all of that means a lot to her so you know kill doomsday one more time uh and, and he'll do his dirty work for him like like seriously like he doesn't care if he can't control the monster and that's what people I, I think a lot of people are missing that aspect he really does not care what happens at this point like he's so far he's so far gone he's so far unhinged and that's what bruno was trying to tell lois as well like the man is nuts like it's it's no reasoning with him he wouldn't even do it for his own daughter so I mean, I don't see why it took this long for him. But, well, I get why it took Amanda so long. Like, she's freaking head over here in love with this man. And, well, you see what... Like, you came and told Lois that she killed... That he killed Cheryl. So why did you think you were safe? I, I really would want to know. But I guess that's what people who are blinded by love and feelings do. So, he goes to the mines. Clark gets there almost immediately after him. While he... And uh, Bizarro is basically like roaring at him basically like he's trying to get home bizarro wants to get home and that was so tragic like bizarro's story throughout this whole series is so sad it's so sad oh uh, but he's trying to get home trying to break through trying to open that portal again but we know the portal is unfortunately closed at this point i would not send bizarro back there anyway he's a mindless monster and that town is still you know somewhat thriving like tall is over there like i would not send a mindless monster back there to terrorize that city either like terrorize that world heck no no never no that, that's not my thing. I, I don't like that idea at all. But Lex shoots him with some missile that comes out the suit, blows up, uh, and we get comic book accurate doomsday. At least as far as we're gonna get with the you know having a, the the uh, House of Elcrest on his chest. But uh, we get that he attacks the city. Um, we see John and Jordan in full hero mode. John saves denise and everybody in that story he catches that using his football athleticism that was so cool to see um also did you peep that john and jordan are wearing blue and red the classic superman colors it harkens back to clark kent and his small build days when he used to wear like a blue jacket or a red jacket also uh superman red and blue like come on it's so many easter eggs in this episode uh jordan has an amazing hero moment with the lady in the diner uh, he's helping her with her panic attack. She's having a panic attack. He blows on the cup. He said, uh, sometimes holding things cold helps. That was his hero moment, and I loved it. Jordan has had so much character growth and development from season one until now. Um, Alex Garfin, you are amazing. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. And seeing John basically win back his friendship with Denise after last week when she was pissed at him, I loved that. And seeing him, like seeing them just flying around and helping, you know, just protecting the townspeople, the people that they love chef's kiss like like come on that was freaking amazing but we see clark trying to take on doomsday they initially think that clark was you know knocked out in the mines and possibly dead again but they hear him coming and they say it's dad that always happens in the penultimate episode when superman is coming in at the not not the last minute but after he's 
you know, incapacitated at first, and he comes flying in. They say, it's dead, it's dead, and I, I love that. So he comes flying in, he fights Doomsday. Once they see Doomsday, like, Lois tries to reason with him again, but it does not work because, like I said, the mind is gone. Lex did what he sought out to do, and he just doesn't care anymore. Like, he doesn't care about this monster, and I think the monster knew that, which is why he was roaring and basically saying, no, 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 leave me alone, leave me alone. I just want to go home. I want no parts of this. I shouldn't have let you do this to me in the first place. Uh, that's just my thoughts. But, guys, uh, the episode ends with Bizarro grabbing Clark, as he says, I love, and, you know, he was going to say, I love you uh, to his family because he's beat up. He's bleeding. like He's cut uh, He's cut up again. And then Doomsday flies in and grabs him by the head and flies off with him. But... That's where the episode ends. This episode is a 10 out of 10 in my book. Like, I would take nothing from this episode. Episode was a 10 out of 10. If you like this episode and you want to talk about it more, please hit the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts and everything on this episode. And like I said, guys, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. Enjoy this day. And uh, catch you all next time. Please. I love all of you. <laughs>